Okay, so now let's try a slightly more complicated example. So now I have a string with two weights hanging on it. So all I've done here is I hung these two fishing weights on this string, uh, taped it to the wall, took a picture of it, and printed it so that we could draw on it. So let me start by drawing our coordinate axis. So I'm going to take my rolly ruler here, and I'm just going to line it up to get it straight here. So we'll have an x-axis here. I'll just put the y-axis to be aligned with this guy here. And now I'm going to have three angles that I have to worry about. I'm going to call this angle one. Uh, let's put a dashed line here just so we can see where the x-axis lies. I'll call this angle theta two. And this angle, which is the same, whichever way we look at it, is uh, theta three. Now again, the problem statement here is that we have two loads. So again, they're equal weight. So this one is P, this one is P pulling downwards. And I wanna ask the question, what are the tensions of these strings? So T1, I'll call this one T2 and T3. And uh, so again, this is a quite simplified example, but representative of what we we'll want to do in more complicated structures. So let's just tackle this or start tackling this the way we uh, would without using uh, graphics, which is just summing the forces in the X and Y direction at each node. So let's, we have node here, number one, node here, number two. So let's start with the sum of the forces at the X direction need to equal zero at node number one. So what would that mean? It means that the X component of T1 here, so the X component of this vector, one in that direction, needs to balance the X component of T3. So the way we would write that out is that T1 times the cosine of theta one equals T3 times the cosine of theta three. Now we have to look at the X, why don't we look at the X component of the forces at node number two. So again, we'll write sum the forces in X have to equal to zero at node number two. And now here, we're gonna have T2 with an X and a Y component pulling like that. And T3 in this case, due to equal and opposite forces, the tension in line three is gonna pull this node this way and this node that way. So the forces acting on the node T3 are gonna be pulling that way. So we would have T2 times the cosine of theta two being that force and this node needs to feel that force pulling that way. So equal to T3 cosine of theta three. And so now what we now notice here is that both of these T1 and T2, it's equal to the same term, right? These two terms are the same. So we could rewrite this by saying T1 times the cosine of theta one equals T2 times the cosine of theta two. Now that's an interesting result, which should also make sense, right? Because I could have isolated this system, right? If I blocked off that there are two things hanging in here, two weights, but I just told you there are two weights in here, but not how they were configured, and I kind of covered it up, you would still come to the conclusion that the system at this scale here would have to balance, right? Whether we cut it off imaginary and isolate this node, the free body diagram of the whole system has to be in equilibrium in this direction. So it makes sense the X component here needs to equal the X component there. Now let's go up and do the Y components of the forces. And so it's basically the same thing. So I'll move a little bit quickly. So again, summing the forces in Y needs to equal to zero. I'm gonna do that at node number one. So I have a downward force P, which is up downward. Then I have two upward forces, which is T1 times the sine of theta one plus T3 times the sine of theta three. Now we could also go to this node here and we could say some of the forces in the y direction need to equal zero at that node. 
so at node number two. And here, I have P acting downwards. I also have this one acting downwards, right? So T3 times the sine of theta three acting on that node is pulling it down. And the only one pulling up is T2 times the sine of theta two. And so, so now again, and I, hopefully you can see this or you can work it out yourself, which is this T3 sine of theta three shows up in both places, but it shows up on opposite sides of the equation. So if I add these two equations together, what I would get is that 2p equals t1 times the sine of theta 1 plus t2 times the sine of theta 2. And again, that should make sense from the whole system, right? Because if I hold up these nodes, the two forces that I need to pull up need to exactly counterbalance these two weights pulling down. So this gives us a system of equations to solve because if I know these angles, which I could measure, we could plug this in and solve for T1 and T2. And then that would allow us to solve for the final two things that are unknown, which is T3 and what this angle is here, theta three. So in an experiment, and you should try this yourself, is if I hold these two lines and I move them around, I could always set this angle, I can always set this angle, but then this one is kind of determined by the force balance. So I can't independently control all three angles. I can only independently control two of them. Okay, so now let's solve this problem using only graphics. So let's start with a clean sheet here and, go, and do only the graphical interpretation. So again, all we want to do is find all the forces here. So let's take our Rolly ruler and remember our idea of the uh, force triangle. So what that means is I would extend this line here Take my rolling ruler, and ah, I forgot one important thing. We need to mark P. So I'm gonna mark P, my load downward here is being one inch, so that's one unit of force downwards. Now I'm in a good shape. So now I can roll this down, line this vector up with this one, draw this line, which just coincidentally intersects there. So remember, this is T1, this is T2, and this is T3. So this vector here is T1. I just picked it up and moved it there. This vector here is T3. I just picked it up and moved it there. So now I have this nice triangle of forces, which just conveniently hits my line there for no reason other than luck. So now let's draw my other load here, which is P, which conveniently hits that line there. And now let's draw our uh, other forces by extending this line here, T3. And then let's roll this line down here, T2. Let me just extend them a little longer so they intersect. And then now I've got my vectors. So this one here is T2, this one going back is T3, and this one going downwards is P. So now I have two triangles, this one here and this one here. But you can see this is getting a little bit messy, so there's kind of a better way to do this, which is maybe a uh, little bit cleaner, which is rather than trying to overlay all the vectors on top of the figure of the structure itself, let's draw the vectors somewhere else. So let me draw a vertical line, and I'm gonna draw it over here and I'm gonna make it uh, exactly two inches. So we're gonna have one line here, one here. So there's two inches there. And so what all I'm gonna doing here is I'm picking this load here and this load here and I'm popping them on top of each other. So I'm gonna call that P and that P. Now, I'm gonna take this line here, T1 roll it up to the top of the triangle here. Just draw a long line like that. I'm gonna take this one here, I'm gonna roll it up here. So this vector pointing this way is T2, the one pointing this way is T1. 
And now we show that there's only one thing left to do, which is to draw T3, which better connect these points. So it has to connect there. And we can confirm that the angle is the same, right? The angle in the structure is the same as the angle of the vector in the force triangle. And by stacking these two triangles on top of each other, what we're really seeing is that this side here, right? Remember when we drew this, this side here was T3. Has to be the same as this side here. So it's like I'm picking this triangle up and putting it here. But by drawing it here, you see how quick I did that? All I had to do was draw my two downward loads, copy these two angles and translate them up there, complete the triangle. And now by simply measuring the sides, I can measure this side. I see that the length is about two and a half inches. I can measure this side and see it's about uh, two and an eighth. So, so 2.125. And so that tells me instantly what the lows are. So you see how quickly without any equations, I'm just able to take the geometry, draw these triangles, stack them together, measure the length of the vectors and get the forces. So in the next video, we'll go through a little more complicated example, and I'll be a little bit more systematic about how I label things, and we'll do a few examples of how to construct these kind of diagrams uh, very quickly and to get the loads in a simple structure uh, without using a single equation.